G'day, welcome to Partakers and our series Church Moves Ahead, where we look together at the history of the early church, and in particular its persecution. We are taking brief excerpts from an ancient book, Fox's Book of Martyrs. This excerpt is from chapter 1. Christ our Saviour in the Gospel of St. Matthew, hearing the confession of Simon Peter, who, first of all other, openly acknowledged him to be the Son of God, and perceiving the secret hand of his father therein, called him, alluding to his name, a rock, upon which rock he would build his church so strong that the gates of hell should not prevail against it. In which words, three things are to be noted. First, that Christ will have a church in this world. Secondly, that the same church should mightily be impugned, not only by the world, but also by the uttermost strength and powers of all hell. And thirdly, that the same church, notwithstanding the uttermost of the devil and all his malice, should continue. Which prophecy of Christ we see wonderfully to be verified, insomuch that the whole curse of the church to this day may seem nothing else but a verifying of the said prophecy. First, that Christ has set up a church, needs no declaration. Secondly, what force of princes, kings, monarchs, governors, and rulers of this world, with their subjects, publicly and privately, with all their strength and cunning, have bent themselves against this church. And thirdly, how the said church, all this notwithstanding, has yet endured and held its own. What storms and tempests it has overpassed. Wondrous it is to behold. For the more evident declaration whereof, I have addressed this present history to the end, first that the wonderful works of God in his church might appear to his glory, and also that the continuance and proceedings of the church from time to time being set forth, more knowledge and experience may redound thereby to the profit of the reader and edification of the Christian faith. As it is not our business to enlarge upon our Saviour's history, either before or after his crucifixion, we shall only find it necessary to remind our readers of the discomfiture of the Jews by his subsequent resurrection. Although one apostle had betrayed him, although another had denied him, under the solemn sanction of an oath, and although the rest had forsaken him, unless we may accept the disciple who was known unto the high priest, the history of his resurrection gave a new direction to all their hearts, and after the mission of the Holy Spirit imparted new confidence to their minds. The powers with which they were endued emboldened them to proclaim his name, to the confusion of the Jewish rulers and the astonishment of Gentile proselytes.